Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show where in this video we're going to address the question why do NAD plus levels decline with age? And to help me address this question I'm going to use two recent nature publications that have both investigated the involvement of CD38, an enzyme that degrades NAD plus, and how its activity and expression is regulated and changed during aging. So to break this video down, I'll begin by giving some background to what NAD plus is and introduce you to what is a very complicated metabolic pathway. But don't worry, I won't make it complicated. Well, I hope not. Then we're going to go straight and have a look at some of the results from these publications and what they actually found out. And then we'll take this information together. And there's actually a very good analogy by Eric Verdon, who was one of the main authors on one of the papers. And I think that will help you to understand what they found out in these papers. And so we can use that to then evaluate the take homes from these papers and how that falls in with NAD plus supplementation. So I feel like it's been a while since I did a video on NAD plus. So let's just start with the basics. What actually is it? Well, NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, and it comes in two forms, an oxidized state known as NAD plus and a reduced form known as NADH. And the switching between these two different states makes NAD plus a really important cofactor within our cells. In fact, to quote David Sinclair, you could argue NAD plus is the most important molecule in the body, maybe with the exception of ATP, but without either of them, you're dead within 30 seconds. And that's because NAD plus is required for around 500 different enzymatic reactions. And its two major functions can be split into two. Firstly, NAD plus can act as a redox coenzyme by alternating between its oxidized and reduced state, and that's really important for metabolism. But NAD is also used as a substrate by NAD consuming enzymes, and these include sirtuins and PARP1, and also CD38. I've spoken about SIRT1 in a previous video, and PARP1 are proteins that act in response to DNA damage, and you'll learn more about CD38 in this video. So hopefully from this, it's pretty evident that NAD plus is a pretty important cofactor within our cells. However, NAD plus levels have been shown multiple times to decline with age. And so there's a lot of hype and excitement around being able to boost these NAD plus levels as we age to counteract the age associated consequences of having low NAD plus levels. To be able to do this though, we need to understand why NAD plus declines in the first place. And there are two main reasons for this. Either the production of NAD plus declines or the consumption of NAD plus increases. And these aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. They could both, both be happening. And so here I'm using the analogy of Eric Verdin, the current president of the Buck Institute, who's also one of the main authors on one of these recent Nature publications. And he uses the analogy that if we consider NAD plus as being the water source, then NAD plus production would be the faucet and NAD consumption would be the sink. And so as we age, there seems to be lower levels of NAD+. And so it wasn't clear until these papers whether or not the decline stems from a decreased production of NAD+, so there's a problem with the faucet, or from increased degradation of NAD+, analogous to a leaky sink. And to place this analogy onto NAD+, metabolism, there are many different ways in which NAD+, can be synthesized, either using the de novo pathway from tryptophan or by the salvage of NAD plus from precursors going from nicotinamide NAM to NMN nicotinamide mononucleotide back to NAD plus. And as you can also see on this diagram, NAD plus can be consumed by three different enzymes, sirtuins, CD38 and PARP1. Now, previous work has shown that the protein levels of CD38 increases during aging and this can be seen in multiple tissues. Mice, completely lacking this protein, were protected from age-related NAD decline, and they also had enhanced metabolic health and mitochondrial function. And so this was suggesting that CD38 is a primary NAD plus consuming enzyme, potentially responsible for age-related NAD decline in the tissues. But it raises the following questions. Why is CD38 increasing in expression? And what cells are expressing the CD38? And so these are just some of the questions that these two nature publications were trying to address. The first one is senescent cells promote tissue NAD plus decline during aging through the activation of CD38 plus macrophages. 
And the second one focuses a little bit more on CD38. CD38 ectoenzyme in immune cells is induced during aging and regulates NAD plus and NMN levels. Now both of those titles are quite mouthfuls, so let's break it down. So the first study that has come out from the Buck Institute was more focusing on which cell types are expressing CD38. And what they found was that high levels of CD38 were being expressed in M1-like macrophages. And this could be seen in particular in white adipose tissue and within the liver of mice. And this increased expression of CD38 within these M1-like macrophages was associated with reducing the tissue NAD plus levels. And these M1-like macrophages accumulated during aging and acute responses to inflammation. Now, macrophages are a type of immune cell, and so they can be activated in response to inflammatory factors. So it's interesting to note that the authors found that senescent cells were accumulating also in the white adipose tissue and the liver during aging. A key feature of senescent cells being the secretion of this senescence-associated secretory phenotype that includes inflammatory factors. Now, if you want to understand what senescent cells are better, then I recommend you watching one of my previous videos talking about senescence. Um, I just haven't really got time to go into too much detail here. And so, as I said, these senescent cells have a secretory phenotype, and one of these factors is the cytokine interleukin-6. And the authors showed that interleukin-6 alone was sufficient to induce CD38 expression in macrophages. And so this made a connection between the SASP, the secretory phenotype of the senescent cells, and this activation of these M1-like macrophages expressing CD38. Now, if you're wondering what the M1 of M1 macrophage means, it just refers to the type of macrophage, there being M1 and M2 macrophages. And so a general take home from this first publication is that aging related inflammation is enhancing NAD degradation due to an increase in CD38 levels in M1 macrophages. Now some of the findings within this first paper are validated by the second paper. However, in the second paper, they focus a little bit more on the receptor, which is CD38, and how the NAD levels change when the CD38 is inhibited. And so CD38 is a really interesting protein, and this is because its enzymatic domain, basically the part of the protein that degrades NAD, can only face one side of the membrane. So either the enzymatic domain is inside the cell or is outside the cell. And the majority of CD38 has an orientation such that the enzymatic domain is facing the outside of the cell. And so it raises the question as to how if it's facing outside the cell, is it regulating NAD levels within a cell? And so hopefully I haven't confused you with that. But what they go on to demonstrate in this study is that the ectoenzymatic activity, so the activity outside the cell, is regulating the nicotinamide nucleotide levels. And that part of this is being mediated by the extracellular degradation of the NAD plus precursor NMN. As what they tease apart in this study, by using a variety of different inhibitors of CD38, both different compounds and antibodies that can inhibit the activity of CD38, to show that what seems to be the case is that CD38 is controlling the availability of NMN to other cells. But my favourite part of this study was when they administered one of the antibodies that inhibits CD38 activity, known as AB68. And they administered this antibody to mice and they found that it increased the NAD plus levels in the white adipose tissue and it also increased the levels of the NAD plus precursor NMN. And so what they then did was inhibit the production of NMN by blocking the enzyme NAMPT, which is the enzyme involved in the synthesis of NMN. And then what they could see was that this inhibition of NAMPT abrogated the boosting in levels of NMN and NAD plus caused by this antibody 68 in the white adipose tissue. And so bottom line is that it shows the NMN is required for the antibody 68 induced NAD plus boosting. Now, if you've made it this far, congrats. My brain is definitely aching a bit. So don't worry, it's all downhill from now as we'll pull together all of this information. Now, the easiest way to do this is probably to go back to the force and sink analogy I used at the beginning of the video that I've stolen from Eric Verdon. And so what he says in this news 
article about this publication is what their data shows is that the decline seen in the production of NAD plus during aging seems to be more of an issue due to a leaky sink as opposed to an issue in production of NAD plus. And so one way to compensate for a decline in NAD plus levels with aging is to supplement with NAD plus precursors. And so what Eric says is that ultimately, I think supplementation will be part of the equation, but filling the sink without dealing with the leak will be insufficient to address the problem. And so basically, this study doesn't negate the potential benefits of taking NAD plus precursors. It just suggests that what would be even more effective would be ways of preventing this increased level and activity of CD38. That is a key culprit in the decline in NAD plus levels partially through also degrading NMN. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't we just try and inhibit CD38 then? Well, future studies will be required to try and investigate better the importance of CD38 in macrophages and to try and better understand why it is that they seem to upregulate CD38. Nonetheless, Eric Ferdin says in this article as well that there's preliminary data suggesting that blocking CD38 activity in older animals restores NAD plus levels in specific tissues. Moreover, instead of CD38, these studies also show the importance of senescent cells and actually being upstream and driving CD38 activation in the macrophages through the secretory inflammatory phenotype. And so having senolytics that kill senescent cells or senomorphics, which are thought to ameliorate the secretory phenotype, could be alternative potential therapeutic options to help boost NAD plus levels. And so it'll also be interesting to see future studies that try and take these combinatorial approaches into account. Now, it probably would have made more sense for me to have done the NMN giveaway in this video than my previous video, but I'm still going to be cheeky and tell you that if you use the discount code cheeky, you can get 10% off at do not age.org where they have a variety of different supplements on sale, including NMN. But please see the disclaimer in the description. And so congrats again for making it to the end of this video. I felt like this was quite a challenging one. At least for me, reading both those papers was a big toll in my brain. <laughs> but they were really interesting papers. Um, it was a good pain. Um, anyway, hopefully you've learned something in this video. And as always, thanks for listening.